live, but that's okay. Let me check on my phone. Oh, that was takes a couple of seconds. So, hey, Casey, I do believe that we're live. I'm just going to double check on my phone to make sure we are. Fantastic. Um, it, yes, it appears we are. Yeah, so we're live and talking. How are you? <laughs> I'm so well, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much for coming into this area to have an interview and a chat with me. And um, yeah, such a great opportunity to get to know you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. I'm just realizing my thing over my head. You can only see half of the name. But that's, that's okay. So whereabouts in the world are you? You're in Queensland, is it? Yes, Kamal. So I'm in sunny Brisbane. Not so sunny this morning, as you can tell, but normally sunny Brisbane. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and I'm, in, I'm in Perth and I know that there's people that will be watching this from all over the world. So isn't technology a marvellous thing? It's amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? I yeah. absolutely love it. That's it. So tell us a little bit about Casey, as in, obviously we can tell you're like myself, you have an accent. Um, so where have you come from? Where, how did you get here, if you like, and who are you now? Yeah, Kamal, so yes, the accent has not gone away 20 plus years later. So I'm originally from Zimbabwe in Africa, and I did all my schooling in Africa. I went to university in Cape Town in South Africa and had always had this entrepreneurial itch, wanted to be a business owner, to follow in the footsteps of my dad. And so I studied business um, at university in South Africa, majoring in marketing. And then, you know, I kind of finished that up, went back home to Zimbabwe for a couple of months and actually met my husband to be then. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not interested in settling down. I'm heading to the big smoke of London and yeah. I'm going to go and do the whole backpacking thing. And all that kind of stuff. So I packed up my bags. I actually worked for six months in Zimbabwe, saved the airfare, and then headed to London, uh, where I got my first job working for Citigroup in uh, in Canary Wharf. But I actually went to Canary Wharf at the time. They were in London Bridge. But I started working for them. And six months after that, my hubby, it was then my boyfriend, says, "Ah, oh, I'm packing up in Zimbabwe. I'm coming over to the UK." So he came over, followed me. And we ended up spending the next 12 years in the UK. We had no intention of staying that long. But, you know, we, I worked my way up the kind of corporate ladder at Citigroup into marketing. And I had an amazing job traveling around the world, staying in five-star accommodation. And I just loved all of that. And I loved the ability to be able to travel. It was so easy from Europe, from the UK to travel to yes, Europe and all yes. that kind of thing, you know. So Keith and I had an amazing, we spent six months traveling around the US. Um, this was all pre-kids, right? Um, and, then, <laughs> and then the kids came along and I was still working for Citigroup and there was not back then, it was kind of the early 2000s. And I said, look, I'd like to come part, come back to work part time. And it was full time or nothing at that time. And I was like, oh, wow, I couldn't leave my eldest dropping him off at daycare when it was dark and then traveling, commuting to Canary Wharf an hour and a half one way, you know, so three hours on the train and then picking him up and it was six o'clock and dark again. I was like, I can't um, do this. So I stopped work and spent the next six years um, bringing up my three boys. And dabbling a little bit, you know, I always had my finger in something, you know, so I actually imported baby clothes and sold them at the markets in the UK and things like that. But, um, but I couldn't kind of keep, couldn't keep still and just be a complete stay at home mom. I had to do something all the time. But we then decided um, when our um, youngest was about one, one and a half, two, we said, okay, um, what are the plans? Are we going to stay in the UK or what are, what are we going to do? And we were really craving that African kind of lifestyle again, especially having three sons. And so moving back to Africa wasn't an option for us. We just thought that the, with the, um, you know, the, the, the kind of uncertainty about the future of Africa, we just weren't, we weren't 100% well, we, we knew that we could bring, want to bring up our children in that kind of environment. And so we looked at other options and we decided to immigrate to Australia. So we moved completely blind. We'd never set foot in Australia before. We decided to move here permanently. And so that was now 12 years ago. So we've been in Australia 12 years and it has just been the most amazing 
amazing experience. The boys have absolutely thrived here. And when we moved, I said to my hubby, okay, so now it's time to, you know, scratch that entrepreneurial itch if you like and so I decided um, to start my own marketing consulting business on site I had a job yeah. working for an engineering company and I was marketing manager for an engineering company but I started the uh, consulting business on the side and that gradually um, grew to an agency I had a team of five we hit six figures within 18 months and it was going really well until <laughs> Suddenly I had this aha moment and I realized how much of an introvert I was and how much the business that I'd built, which was always supposed to be the dream, was completely misaligned to who I was and who I was serving. And so I decided about four years ago to burn that business to the ground and I started from scratch again. Wow. And now I'm doing what I love. I call it my passion project. Um, it's the Quiet Collective and how I am as a business coach and marketing mentor for introverted, quiet, sensitive women just like me and that's kind of awesome. the very summarized version of my <laughs> life <laughs> thank you thank you so interesting I love them um, number one I'll just kind of touch on it you said you were always dabbling you were all no matter what so it sounds like throughout your life that entrepreneurial itch as you call it you were always dabbling what was it do you believe that kept you interested not to just say oh bugger it I'll never do it again I think I, I, th I think I'm always I love learning. So learning is one of my my, my you know I, my Clifton strength finders. Learning always comes up. It's definitely one of my values. Come on, so I think always mm -hmm. learning about. I love understanding what makes humans tick as well. So it's that it's definitely that marketing aspect of really understanding what why people buy what they buy and why and all that kind of thing. So I find mm -hmm. that really intriguing. So it's I think that that um, curiosity mixed with my desire of learning that's constantly made me kind of continue to stretch myself, try things, that kind of thing, you know? And, and you mentioned being that you suddenly realized you were an introvert. So um, we talked briefly before we came on to the um, interview as to what the, the normal assumption sometimes of an introvert and extrovert is. But how did mm. you come to the realization, like suddenly, if you like that, hang on, I'm an introvert, I can't do this. What, what was that? Yeah, so I'm just trying to think if there was actually a specific thing, or I think it was kind of these thing, this evidence that was kind of building on each other. So when I remember, you know, as I remember growing up, I've always had lots of friends and been pretty social, you know, but as I've got older, I've realized how much I love being alone. So especially as a mum with three sons, I kind of craved that me time, that private time, that time away from the family that I could actually have just some silence. And I remember we live on acreage here now and I remember kind of dropping them off at school and being able to drive up the driveway once I dropped them at school. Just, <sighs> it's that peace and quiet you know so I really love 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 being on my own as much as I love people I love being on my own and I actually recharge um so in terms of energy management that's how I actually recharge my energy recharge. being being yeah. alone and so that's one of the big markers for me Kamal when I was building my business is that I realized like I, I had the marketing agency I had all these projects I had all these clients I had staff and it was this constant pull for my energy and attention and I felt my the real desire to retract and actually recoup on my on my own and so that was a big marker for me around mm. the introversion mm. around how I actually manage my energy because um, introversion yeah. also can be um, taken as how you make sense of the world so how we make sense of the world is what we feel think or tell ourselves rather than what um, like for me as an extrovert um, and I'm apparently a balance between both but okay. it's quite often how I experience things from external that will help me make sense of my world. Whereas it's for an introvert, it's what they experience internally that helps them make sense of the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. So super, super introspective too. So I talk yeah. about how I have multiple tabs open in my head because I... <laughs> I'm so deeply introspective and analytical, you know, and I think that's another big marker in terms of introversion is actually intrinsically, as you said, kind of experience how I actually uh, make sense of the world, how I experience the world is all done internally and yeah. with the multiple tabs open in my head. All I laugh at when you say the tabs open. I caught myself last week with 23 actual tabs open on the computer. So I even do that externally. 
So what's the hardest decision you've ever had to make in your business? Closing, oh my gosh, closing the, business, the first business down because mm. it was a profitable business. Um, it was doing really well. And it was just, that was the hardest decision I've absolutely had to make. Come on, it was, it was momentous, you know, and I, mm. I reflect back on that. And actually naively, I mean, I could have really sold that business, but I just didn't know what I didn't know at the time. And, you know, I was just so... I was so burnt out by it. I was absolutely burnt out by it. But I was, it was this push and the striving to actually make it work. I'm a high achiever as well. So it was like I didn't want to kind of look like it was failing, if you like. But it was just yeah. completely draining for me. And so I knew it was a real aha moment for me one afternoon, <laughs> sitting there trying to juggle multiple balls. And it was just like, okay, just close the computer down, Casey. Go and sit. And you've just got to just really think this through and I joke it's like three o'clock in the afternoon I'd pour myself a glass of wine and went and sat on the veranda and I was like okay let's really just think about this you know what what is it costing you to have built a business yes you're following your entrepreneurial dream but what is it costing you and what's the payoff that you're getting from it you know and I was like the costs are too high for me and it's really not something that I wanted to build and it was really around ha having uh, it was definitely the piece around the project management and that kind of thing that was really, um, mm. really draining for me. And so, yeah, come on, just deciding to close that and start completely from scratch was a big deal. Um, wow, you, so, very brave. So, re so rewarding. And, you know, so rewarding for four years later, you know, I can reflect back and I was like, it was one, it was such a great decision. But at the time, it was really hard. Absolutely, it would be because, and even in society, tells us what's successful, what's not. And to have something, as you say, by all means, it was very successful and everything, and to just suddenly turn around and decide, right. nah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and how did you make peace with that decision at that time? Uh, that's a really good question. You know what, Kamal, I just felt like I took... I took one day at a time so I just really like I was really clear about the type of person that I wanted to work with so I think from there you know getting super clear on that and then really sitting with understanding what my superpowers if you like were I call mm. them my introverted superpowers like really what is what is it that's draining my energy in this business what is the things that are really um, not aligned to who I am what so asking a lot of questions uh, it was it was a huge period of self-inquiry and that's really when my personal development journey started as well because mm. I realized how much I needed to know myself intimately uh, whereas when I'd started that business I didn't you know I, I yes. felt like I didn't you know and so um so making peace was it was just a day at a time and really investing in a, a level of self inquiry that I'd never experienced before. Mm. So. so when you say um, really getting clear on who it is you want to work with and mm -hmm. as you say what it is you want to do, what tips or insights could you share with somebody that was in that kind of if you like um, crossroads of oh, I've been having this dream or I've had this side hustle since God knows when. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking of just giving it all up, but they still keep dabbling. What advice or insights could you give somebody that's on that, you know, <laughs> indecision? Oh, my right gosh. Now? So this is huge. And I, come on, I, I found it, I don't want to say cheesy, but for me, it was really understanding why I was put on this planet. <laughs> mm. And for me, with the first, with the marketing agency, I was, with, I was working with clients, helping them grow their businesses, you know, helping them with marketing. But they were, so many of them were just in it, doing business for business sake. And for me, it's about working with people who really want to make an impact in the world, who really want to actually change lives. And so for me, when I started to think about what it was, I realized how much, I was working in that space um, and seeing women who were such experts in the field, because I was working for professional services. So I'd been working for Citigroup, I'd been in finance, I'd been in engineering, I'd been in accounting. So I'd had a lot of experience in professional services. And so I was seeing women 
who were experts in their fields. They were lawyers, they were accountants, they were HR specialists, they were experts in the field. And yet they were struggling so much with actually building their businesses. One, because they were hiding behind the term introversion. That, uh, that's one thing that I really recognized um, in, in that, but also in ways that were misaligned to who they were as, their, as, as themselves too, right? And so I think for me, the tip, if you can find it, is really tapping into why you're doing what you're doing. Because mm. when I could really st step into, okay, what is it that I want to create and why do I want to do that? Every time I close my eyes to think about that, all I saw was visions of women coming together to lift each other up. Like that is my, like that is my purpose. Like that's, that is what I want to create. And so that, so for me, it was like that, okay, so now who do I need to step up and be as a leader to actually facilitate that? So that was the, kind of the journey that I went on mm. once I'd closed the, the marketing agency. I was like, I know what my vision is. I'm super clear on what my vision is. I don't necessarily know exactly how I'm going get to get there, which is why I say we take, you know, we can see what the top of the mountain is. We don't necessarily know how we're going to get there. But if you yeah. are in momentum, the clarity comes, right? And so I was clear on who I wanted to serve and I knew what my top of my, the mountain was. And that may change. Circles of women coming together, who knows what that looks like in the future, you know? Yeah. But I knew that I wanted, that's exactly what I wanted to kind of step up and create. And so um, so that's one of the biggest tips, I think, for me at that yeah. dabbling is to really tap into, okay, well, why, what is the fuel that's going to keep you going? Because look, let's face mm. it, we both know that entrepreneurial journey is no um, no easy feat and it has no, all with no, lots, no, no. lots of ups and downs, right? And so you've really got to tap into what is that thing that's going to keep you going? And every time I have one of those dips, I'm like, okay, come back to it, Casey, come back to center. What is it that you want to create? Why do you want to create it? And I know that women, I feel personally, are going to heal and lead the world. And that's I want to be a part mm. of that. I want to and um, and that that's such a, a great vision. I know mm -hmm. that with a lot of women I I talk to, um, mm -hmm. uh, as I'm sure with yourself, I kind of intellectually get what you've said. Mm -hmm. On the other side is that they get themselves spiraling into a lostness, if that's the word, or uh, not quite sure, and they come back to this every now and again, but they forget to come back to that vision until they've gone further down that rabbit hole. Does that mm. make sense? Mm. Um, how do you, for example, go, hang on, Casey, what's the bigger vision? What is it that reminds you to trigger that? What is it that reminds me to trigger that? I don't know, Kamal, like I want to say that, like, I have convers like, I feel like I have conversations every week, like, well, that, actually, that's probably one of the things I schedule in time to talk to people that remind me of that vision every single week. So I have connection time every single week reminding me of what doing that what I'm doing and it may not even necessarily be with clients you know when I'm stepping into that and I'm actually working with clients yes of course I'm reminded because we're actually working on that we're working on yeah. the strategy we work, work on that but it's actually then the scheduling time with influencers with colleagues with acquaintances with partners that kind of thing mm. so I think that's one of the big things I think right. that really reminds so whether that be that. like a webinar or a one-on-one -on -one or an interview yep. or whatever like that okay cool yeah yep, um, and yep. what are your other success habits getting up early so I'm an early bird yeah. I love, love, love starting my day early and I will generally, I fall off the wagon sometimes, I'm definitely not perfect around this, but I have to move. So I go for a walk, I have a, an app on my phone, again, the high achiever tick box kind of person that I am, I have an app yeah, and <laughs> that I can yeah. track my habits, it's called Habit Ball, it's a really cool app. And I have so one called I, Habit Share, so quite similar. Uh, you go. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, as so I do that, I I try and walk every day in the morning yep. before getting ready. I am I meditate, so I have something called Workshop of the Mind that I use um, through a fantastic mentor that I did his program last year it was a transformational coaching program, which was absolutely amazing. And so I try and meditate every day with that as well. Um, yeah. 
Other success, has, success habits are I'm religious about my calendar. So if it's not mm. in my calendar, it doesn't happen. So even dates like walking are in my calendar and I make them happen and I stick to that. Um, so I'll say those are probably the two big ones for me. Um, Did you say even I'm, date nights? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, cool. My partner says I do that. He says, I have to get put a time in your calendar for you. Yeah, 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 so exactly. We have where do you say you're in? We have finance Sorry. meetings, scheduled personal finance meetings, and all sorts of things. It's all in the calendar. <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. So um, when you say that you're an early bird, what's early to you? Five. Five a.m. Five. Okay. Yeah. So you're up at 5 a.m. and out walking yeah. by? Five th well, 5.30 when it's dark, but it's getting dark. So it's darker. It's it's dark now in the winter. So generally it's a bit late to six, uh, six I'm out the door in the winter. Wow, awesome. Good walk. And and habits are the things that are, um, for me anyway, and I'm guessing it may be true for you if you're so strict with them, they're the things that actually give legs to everything. Because when you're in that momentum, it actually does keep momentum going, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Come on, like I say, Again, with in terms of the personal development work that I've been doing, you know, it's we have again, we can talk about introversion is that for so many women, I think introversion, not only is it the way that we actually process the world and actually see the world and how we actually manage our energy, but we hide behind because it's this kind of um, it's oh you, you're the shy person and that's just not it at all it's this kind of and, and, and talk about actually hiding behind introversion because we're lacking in self-worth or self-confidence and it's all about actually changing those limiting beliefs and I think I mean that it's not just for introverts it's across the it's across the board we all have yeah. this inner critic that we're dealing with you know and I think and um, part of the work that we do is we need to kind of change those neural pathways those subconscious identity that we have but as part mm -hmm. of that too it's actually adopting and our positive habits so letting go of the negative habits of you know putting ourselves down or people pleasing or whatever the neg negative habits that we have are but and then in reintroducing and replacing those real bad habits with the positive habits and that's just a pr practice right and so for me absolutely moving yeah. your, moving my body is a way of actually getting rid of that negative energy and just starting from stretch and starting from fresh every day you know just yeah. it's it feels like a good reset every morning mm -hmm. for me so which well is and that's exactly is there's like a clean slate every morning and for yeah. people I think forget, and I know I didn't realize for a lot of times that habits actually have three parts that they have the trigger and whatever that is, you know, suddenly mm -hmm. I need a bar of chocolate and we've eaten the bar of chocolate before. We but we have the trigger, then we have the routine and then we have the reward and the trigger. Yeah. We can't always identify straight away, but the routine, we realize that we're in the behavior and exactly. the reward. And sometimes the reward is you say, why do you keep doing that? Because the reward is but in that moment, you have a bit of comfort or whatever it is. Absolutely. Um, so that's the reward. So Absolutely. you're right creating new habits has been one of the biggest things for me in running my own business because we have such old habits and it's a societal thing as well isn't it exactly exactly you exactly know. you get so wrapped up in it 100 percent, Kamal. yeah yeah so um so if you see me look inside to side it's because i'm making sure that we're still live on the screen <laughs> i just realizing <laughs> sometimes my head is away like this so tell me um what is the biggest factor that you believe has kept you successful the biggest factor that's kept me successful um showing up every day yeah, so consistency <laughs> yes like even on the days that i haven't won to even on the days that i've wanted to throw in the towel and give up even on you know even in those bad times i think just showing up every day is the thing that's kept me going you know and definitely some days I do not feel like it and I'm like oh my gosh you know but that's when again it comes back to reminding myself okay well, why Casey why am I mm. doing the work that I'm doing you know and I talk about this little gold box behind me which is my confidence box too everyone loves it when I share that because um a coach taught me this one once um and he said to me you know what's what's a list, what's a list of, because I, I was in this space of, I don't know enough, even though I had like, I don't know, 15 years marketing experience and all this kind of stuff, I was running my own successful business. And, um, and he was like, well, what makes you, 
why are you expert? And he made me write down this list of every single accomplishment, achievement, certification, strength that's, you know, feedback that people have given me. And he made me write a list, like a confidence list. I was like, oh, I really loved that. It was like, oh, a huge aha moment for me, recognizing my expertise and my enoughness. And so that was one of the things that I keep in my gold box. But then every time I get great feedback, whether it's an email yeah. or a card or anything like that, I pop that in there too. And so again, the thing that keeps me going when I'm feeling really in those kind of moments of, oh my gosh, what's the thing that's going to keep me going? Showing up. And when I don't feel like showing up, I pull that box out. <laughs> okay. Yes. Some positive yes. reinforcement here, you know. I love it. I've heard of something similar and it used to be, I used to put them on post-it notes. Yeah. And at least once a year, you take them out and you read all these things that you had aha moments or stuff like that. So great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And because I was just about to say to you, there are days, there are days we just don't feel like showing up. There yeah. absolutely are. And in that moment, as you say, you take out that that gold box, which I love, actually, just the, the thought of it being a gold box as yeah. well automatically makes it um, more valuable. Um, is there anything else that in that, darkness if you like of not wanting to show up that you could give others a tip to remember to do talk it out talk it talk out the feelings ah, okay. like absolutely get them out of your head and just verbalize them so whether you've got a best friend or a coach or you just hop on we actually we are doing an amazing um challenge at the moment actually come out in, in, in term inside my membership so we have an amazing resident expert um jennifer um, Jennifer Love, who is a money therapist, and she she does money mindset inside my membership group, and we've got a challenge going on called Empty the Basket, and it's a, a, we have an app um, called Marco Polo where you just get on and you just literally share your feelings. So it's just yeah. actually it's just a way of actually getting them out of your head and releasing them. Like it's just a, an opportunity to let go, you know, and it's been the most powerful exercise for our community members. And so certainly for me, it, it's, it's helped too, is just actually getting that out of your head um, and verbalizing it in yeah. one way, shape or form, whatever that is, you know? And I think yeah. even verbalizing rather than writing it down seems mm. to be even more powerful, you know? Well, it, it, I always find with a lot of old sayings, there's such a uh, wisdom of truth in a lot of old sayings. And mm -hmm. as you were saying that the one that comes up for me is a problem uh, shared is a problem halved. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is when you talk it out. Obviously with somebody you trust, don't just talk it out to anyone. Exactly <laughs> with somebody right. you trust or in an environment like that where people don't say, oh, well, you were miserable yesterday. You must be miserable today. It's like, no, I just needed to talk it out. Mm -hmm. And it does dissipate it quite often when you can let those words out, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's been a really, really powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Now we're coming close to the end of this interview and I know we're hopping over on to another one. But can you tell people that will be watching this, how can they contact you? What's the best way to do that? Yes, thanks, Carmel. So they can head over to my website. It's quietcollective.com.au. And I've got a ton of resources there on how to promote yourself as an introvert and how to actually market yourself as an introvert. Um, and otherwise, I'm most active on Facebook. So you can find me at Casey Lightbody, my personal profile, connect with me, or um, Quite Collective as well as my Facebook page. Yeah, cool. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for um, hanging with us today. As I said, we're hopping over to do another interview, a bit more businessy for the next one. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And I look forward to connecting even more, even though I'm not an introvert. So can extroverts connect with you too? Absolutely. I still love a chat with extroverts. So all sorts make the world go round, right? So I love <laughs> <laughs> cool awesome well let's chat over the next one and for now it's bye for me thanks so much Kamal thank you bye